Before we begin, we must answer a simple question. What is polymorphism? Well, the definition of polymorphism is where a single interface is applicable to a number of different types. And this definition is actually implemented in a number of different ways. We can have a function overloaded so that depending on the number of parameters and the types of the parameters it takes in, it performs different actions. We can have a, f a function written to take in a bunch of generic types, and we can have a function that is written so that it takes in subtypes of a type. But this sounds complex. What does it actually mean? Well, consider explaining to someone how to start a vehicle. Now, even though there are a variety of vehicles, the way of starting the vehicles is surprisingly quite similar. When you're starting a vehicle, you have to start the engine, and then you have to speed up the, the vehicle, and the wheels will turn, and then you'll be driving the vehicle. So even though each of these objects are different, a car is not equal to a motorcycle, etc., the method of starting them is all the same. So we should be able to write some sort of operation that irrespective of the type is able to do a similar operation on each one. We want to be able to call the same method despite having different types. This is polymorphism. So what is polymorphism? Well, it's a way of allowing similar operations to be grouped together under the same name. In the example, it was the operation of start. Let's look at some code examples. Here is an example of type polymorphism. We have a generically written function which can take in a variety of types. This course doesn't cover generic types, so don't worry if you understand. But if you choose to pursue Java further, you will see this some point in your career. This is an example of subtype polymorphism. We have two classes, an animal and a cow, where the cow extends an animal. It's a subtype. In this case, we have a function print sound which takes in an animal object. Even though it's written to take in an animal object, it can still be called on the subtype class, and it works as it should. This is polymorphism. Here we have an example of overloading, in which we have a function that takes in two parameters. If you give it integers, it will add them together and print the result. If you give it strings, it will concatenate them and then print the result. This is also an example of polymorphism. For the purposes of the exercises you will be doing in the next section, don't worry about type polymorphism or generic classes. You will only need to worry about using overloading for the next section. If you get stuck, have a look at the answers written in the About section of the main web course page. Have fun!